Held testimony by Victoria Nahale. Time is fast running out. This is a short summary of the testimony by Victoria Nahale. I was born and lived in Namibia all my life and surrendered my life to Jesus on February 6, 2005. The Lord Jesus Christ has revealed many things in the spiritual realm to me including a couple of trips to hell. The Lord instructed me to share my experiences with the people, he also warned me not to add anything or omit anything from whatever the Lord Jesus Christ showed or told me. By the time of the writing of this book, end of 2006, I was visited 33 times by the Lord Jesus Christ. Every single time of those visitations, the Lord would tell me before leaving that, time is fast running out. First trip to hell. On the weekend of the 23rd of July 2005, I took a 30-minute taxi ride from the town of Ondangwa where I work and stay, to my home village, to spend the weekend with my parents. On my way home, I had a feeling that something extraordinary was going to happen that evening. I arrived home at around 18h00 and that was the time people were preparing for dinner. I was in the kitchen with the rest of my family, lying down on an old sheet on the ground, while my little nieces and nephews were singing their Sunday school songs. Suddenly I felt a heavy anointing come upon me, my body became very weak, and I was out under the power of God. I saw a man, wearing a long white robe tied with a rope of the same color, walking towards where I was lying. There was a brilliant light around him as though it were radiating from him. He was wearing brown sandals, his features were like people from the Middle East, with a beautiful tanned skin. His face was very kind and full of glory but I was unable to look him in the eyes. When he spoke, his voice was tender, kind and loving, yet authoritative. Waves of love were emanating from his very being. He extended his hand to me and pulled me up from where I was lying. Suddenly I was in a beautiful, transformed body, I looked the same as I was when I was 18 years old. I was wearing a white robe tied with a white robe. Although my robe was white, the material was different from the man's robe. His robe was silky with a brilliance that I do not know how to describe. He said, in a most loving and tender voice, Victoria, I want you to come with me. I will show you frightening things and I am taking you to a place where you have never been before in your whole life. He held my right hand and we went. I felt as if we were walking on air and we were ascending all the time. After a while on the way, I was very tired and told him that I was unable to continue the journey and begged him to allow me to go back. However, he looked at me enderly and said, you are not tired, you are fine. If you get tired, I will carry you, but for now you are fine. Peace be with you, let us go. The place at which we arrived was very arid, worse than the worst desert known to man, with no sign of life in any form whatsoever. There was not a single tree or blade of grass or any living thing in sight. It was a very depressing place indeed. We came to a gate and the man turned to me and said, Victoria, we will enter through the gate and the things you will see will frighten and upset you, but you must rest assured that wherever I take you, you will be well protected. Just open your eyes and observe everything I will show you. I was terrified and started to weep. I was protesting and pleaded with the man to take me back. I told him that I did not want to go into that place because I could see through the gate what was going on inside. He looked at me and said, Peace be with you, I am with you. We must go inside, for time is fast running out. We entered through the gate. I cannot describe to you the horror of that place. I am convinced that there is no other place in the entire universe as bad as that place. The place was extremely large and I had the sense that it was expanding all the time. It was a place of utmost darkness and the heat of it could not be measured, it was hotter than the hottest of fires. I could not see any flames of fire or the source of the heat but it was hot. The place was filled with flies of all sizes, green, black, and gray flies. Every conceivable kind of fly was there. In addition, there were also short, thick, black worms everywhere, climbing on everything. The worms started to climb on us and the flies were also all over us. The place was filled with the most disgusting stench, there are no words to describe the intensity of the stench in that place. The smell was almost like rotten meat but was a hundred times worse than the most decaying meat I have ever smelled in my entire life. The place was filled with the noise of wailing and gnashing of teeth, as well as of demonic, evil laughter. The worst thing about this place is that it was filled with people. There were so many people that they could not be numbered. 
The people were in the form of skeletons. I can say with confidence that these skeletons were humans because I recognized some of my very close relatives and people from my village. Their bones were dark gray and extremely dry. They had long sharp teeth like wild animals. Their mouths were large and wide and their tongues were long and bright red. Their hands and feet had long, thin toes and fingers with long, sharp nails. Some of them had tails and horns. There were demons mingling with the people. The demons in appearance looked like alligators and they were walking on four legs. They were comfortable in that environment and were constantly teasing and tormenting the humans. The noise that the demons were making was more like a celebration, as they seemed happy and carefree. They were also dancing and jumping all the time. The humans, on the other hand, looked miserable and depressed. They were in a state of helplessness and hopelessness. The noise from humans was caused by pain, they were weeping, screaming and gnashing their teeth, and were in a desperate situation of unimaginable pain and agony. The people in this place, were innumerable but I could clearly see that the vast majority of them were women. They were divided into many different groups. Even if they were in the groups, it was not possible to estimate the number of people in any single group because the groups were extremely large. The man led me to one of the groups on the eastern side of the place. He looked at me and said, Victoria, this is a group of people who refuse to forgive others. I told them many times in many different ways to forgive others but they rejected me. I have forgiven them all their sins but they refused to forgive others. Their time ran out and they found themselves here. They will be here for all eternity. They are eating the fruits of their labor forever and ever. However, it is painful for me to see them in this horrible place and in this eternal situation, because I love them. I was then led to the next group, and the man told me that the people in the second group were those who had debts. There were three different categories in that group. The first category was of people who owed to others, they could afford to pay their dues but they kept postponing and procrastinating. They would claim that they would pay tomorrow, next week, next year, until the time ran out for them and now they had found themselves in this place. This is where they will stay forever, they are eating the fruits of their labor was of those who had debts that they could afford to pay back and they were willing to pay their debts, but they were afraid of the consequences because, perhaps, if they told the truth they might suffer rejection or they might go to jail or what they had done would be made known to the whole world and they would be humiliated. The man said, none of them came to me to ask me for a way. If they had done so, I would have shown them the easy way out. They used their own wisdom and reasoning which did not help them in any way. Their time ran out and they found themselves in this place where they will be forever. They are eating the fruit of their labor. Then he said, the third category had debts which they could not afford to pay back, but, again, none of them had told me that they had debts they were unable to pay. If they had done so, I would have paid their debts. They also tried to use their own reasoning and wisdom, which did not help them in any way. Now they have found themselves in this place where they will always be. They are eating the fruit of their labor. My heart is aching for all these people because I love them dearly. In the first group, I saw two of my very close female relatives, as well as a 12-year-old, also a relative of mine. I knew she was 12 because that was how old she was at the time of her death. In the second group I also saw some of my relatives, as well as a pastor whom I knew very well. Jakes, my boyfriend who had committed suicide because I gave my life to Christ, was also in the second group. I saw some of my neighbors in both groups as well. I recognized the people I knew before their deaths, they also recognized me. My relatives were very angry when they saw me. And they started to shout obscenities at me, they were using the most vulgar language as they were cursing me. One of them said that I was not worthy of following the man who was with me. They were telling the things I used to do before I gave my life to Christ. They were not lying, the things of which they were accusing me were the truth. Jakes was saying that I belonged to him and I should go where he was because I had committed the same sins as he. At first the pastor seemed happy to see me and he said I did well by coming but his attitude changed immediately when he saw who was accompanying me and then he also joined in the cursing and the use of obscene language. The man with me told me to ignore them for they did not know what they were doing. I was petrified and extremely sad, my body was shaking and I could not stand. I was crying uncontrollably. The man turned to me, gave me a hug, and said, Peace be with you, Victoria.
My strength. Returned and I felt very secure in his embrace. Then he told me that we had to leave the place and go back. He looked at me and said, Victoria, I have shown you. Now you must choose in which of the groups you want to be. The choice is in your own hands. You must tell the people everything you have seen and experienced but do not add or omit anything. I remembered that we left the place of horrors together but I do not know where I left him because then I became aware. I opened my eyes and I was back in my physical body, lying in Oshikati hospital. There was a drip in my left arm, and I saw my mother and other neighbors from our village in one corner of the room, where they were looking at me in amazement. I could see on my mother's face that she had been crying. I asked one of the nurses if she knew what was wrong with me but she only made a joke and said, you were sent back. Perhaps you have done something wrong and you need to repent. The nurse was trying to speak lightheartedly about my condition but I could see she was afraid to come closer to me. I asked her to call the doctor who attended me. When he arrived, he said that he did not know what was wrong with me. Initially, he had thought that I had contracted malaria but the malaria results were negative. He continued to tell me that my temperature, pulse and blood pressure were dangerously low but he could not find the cause for it. He said that there was nothing he could do for me, he could not admit me because I was not sick. The drip they had applied was not working at first but when I opened my eyes, it started to work. He recommended that the nurse administered another drip to me once the first one had finished so that I could get enough strength to go home. I was frightened by what I saw in that place and couldn't stop crying. The stench of that horrible place continued to be as real as when I was there. The scenes from that place were flashing before me all the time. I was unable to sleep and my whole body was in great pain. I felt as though all my limbs had been taken apart and reassembled. Oh, I felt awful. I had diarrhea and a pounding headache for an entire week. My mind was made up that I would not talk to anybody about my experiences because who would believe me? What would people think? I kept telling myself that would never relate my experiences to anybody. One of my mentors phoned me three days later to inquire about my well-being because I sent her a text message asking her to pray for me. Before I knew it I was telling her about my experiences. When I realized what I was doing I had already told her most of the story. I wanted to kick myself. I was crying because I was convinced that I had made the biggest mistake of my life. Now the story was told, there was no possibility I could hide it anymore. Now I knew that if God wants something to be told, it will be told. He is God, after all. On August 19th, I woke up, feeling the signs of the anointing in my physical body. I was weak and trembling, while waves of electricity were going through my body. In the evening I saw a brilliant light coming into the room and in the midst of it was the same man. This time he sat down on a chair next to my bed. I have no idea where this chair came from but it was there as soon as he was ready to sit down. It was a beautiful chair made of solid gold, the shape was that of a conventional chair, with back support. On each leg was a silver star embedded in the gold, the same star was also in the center of the back support. There are round wheels on each leg. After greeting me, he told me that he knew that I had many questions about his identity and that he came to reveal himself to me and to explain certain things that I have experienced. He said, I am Jesus Christ, your Savior. If you have any doubts, look at my hands. That place where we went is hell. When I looked at his hands, I saw scars where the nails pierced him. Dear friend, I want to tell you that hell is not a figment of anybody's imagination but it is a real place and it is unpleasant. It was not made for people but for Satan and his demons. Our rightful place is in heaven with Jesus but we have to choose Jesus before it is too late. Today, when you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Accept Jesus as your personal savior today and live for him. Hell is a terrible place, it is a place of fear and sadness. It is a place of torment and eternal cries and gnashing of teeth. Satan wants to take as many people with him as possible. Do not cooperate with him. Cooperate with Jesus and you will live and not die. I could not understand why the Lord would tell me to make a choice between the two groups he showed me in hell when I was already a born again Christian. I have accepted him into my life and he was still telling me to make a choice whether I want to go to hell or not. I could not understand. I started to pray and asked God to give me a revelation of what he meant and what he wanted me to do. 
The Lord revealed to me that I was harboring a lack of forgiveness and resentment in my heart towards one of my sisters, as well as to my cousin. I asked the Lord to forgive me for my unforgiving spirit. I also asked my sister to forgive me for harboring anger and bitterness in my heart toward her. The Lord instructed me to go and ask forgiveness from my cousin. The Lord also reminded me that there was a time when I acquired a teaching job with a fraudulent diploma and he considered that to be debt and theft. I was determined to do what was right and I asked the Lord to help me through this problem and to show me an easy way out because this was a serious crime which could send me behind bars. He directed me to go to the Department of Education and confess what I had done. I was ready to go to jail if this was unavoidable. I experienced the Lord's favor in a big way. The officials in the Department of Education told me that I should decide what I wanted to do, whether to pay back the salary I had received from the government or not. They promised not press charges against me because they were stunned by my confession. Our God is a faithful God who honors His word. If you are in a situation similar to the one I was in, I want to encourage you to do what is right, no matter the consequences. You might be incarcerated in the earthly jail but that is temporal. No pain or shame will compare to eternity separated from God. Hell is not a nice place. It is better to allow God to judge you now before it is too late. We must not fear God's judgment while we are in the time of grace. We must allow Him to expose whatever is wrong in our lives while we still have time to make right with Him because there is no forgiveness on the other side of the grave. Hell testimony.